Uh, hi, my name is uh, Philip Verloy. I'm part of the technical marketing team at uh, Rubrik, and uh, welcome to see Rubrik in action, uh, if the demo works, uh, at least. Um, so uh, you're going to see the disclaimer slide a lot uh, during the next three days, I guess, but uh, I have to put it up there. So before we get into the demo, uh, just a quick word about what actually is uh, Rubrik, uh, what are we doing? So from a high level, um, we have a converged data management solution. It's actually converging a traditional backup and recovery stack, meaning all of the software that you need to do backup, recovery, archiving, and so on. And at the same time, it's also the backup target that we're converging. So with a deduplicated uh, scale-out storage system, uh, high performance, so we run a masterless node uh, of uh, a cluster of nodes inside of this 2U appliance, and each node also has an SSD uh, caching tier that we use to rapidly ingest data upon. Uh, and because we have this masterless system, each node can also take backups in, uh, in parallel as well. It's then uh, deduped, and it's one global namespace. So if the system scales out, if you need more capacity, uh, the deduplication efficiency is uh, across the entire global uh, storage system as well. It's highly automated, so we don't uh, rely on uh, manual backup schedules, manual backup policies. Uh, you typically define an SLA that tells us how to handle your data end-to-end. Uh, things like uh, RPO, RTO values, but also things like uh, do you want archiving, do you want replication, uh, and so on. And it's then up to the Rubrik cluster itself to make sure that we can hit those, uh, those SLAs. Uh, we do have instant recovery as well. Uh, so uh, through the uh, SSDs, we're able to actually use the appliance as a data store within, within VMware. And more recently, uh, we can do that for SQL uh, Server as well. So there we can mount actually a, a virtual machine and restore it back to Rubrik before we go back to production. Uh, so we can restore a, a virtual machine in a matter of seconds, essentially. Uh, it's secure end-to-end, -end, so uh, data in flight and at rest is encrypted uh, using AIS-256 encryption. And all backups that we store on the system are uh, stored as immutable objects, so they're read-only objects that no internal or external process can uh, change, essentially. Then we have this concept of cloud out uh, and cloud archiving. So the idea is that uh, we ingest all of your data, uh, we index it, and then for longer-term data, we can actually store it on another storage location like an S3 uh, storage bucket, or the public cloud, or even tape, uh, if you uh, choose to do so. And then finally, all of our features and functions uh, are exposed to our RESTful API. So we have this concept of a uh, API-first architecture. That means that if you want to uh, automate or extend the system, uh, it's uh, extremely easy to, uh, to do so. So this is the demo environment. Uh, it's a pretty straightforward setup. So we have a VMware-based uh, environment, a couple of physical servers in there as well. Uh, I have two uh, Rubri clusters doing replication, uh, and they're then both also going to uh, an archive location in, uh, in Amazon S3 uh, in this case. So let's attempt to uh, show you the demo. So we're logging into the, into the system. Uh, it's a fairly lightweight uh, HTML5-based uh, interface that we're using. Um, and again, just to show you that it's uh, completely API-driven, even our own uh, HTML5 interface uh, does API calls to our uh, uh, endpoints. So you can see that here. Essentially, what we show you if you log in is a, a quick overview of everything that's happening in your environment. Uh, so you can see the total number of backups that we're taking, uh, data reduction, and so on. And now what you see is that we, um, in, in the case of uh, VMware-based virtual machines here, that we've discovered all of those VMs. At the moment, they're all protected, and that's basically a function of the SLAs that you see. So if you go into SLA domains, by default, we give you three uh, predefined ones, but you can make as many as you want. So if we create a new one called the uh, fee brown bag, you give us some basic information about, I want to take a backup every four hours, I want to keep it for a day, I want it daily for a week, and so on. In its most simple form, this is an SLA, but you can also add uh, archiving and replication to that. So in this case, I'm pointing to uh, an S3 location in, uh, in Amazon. And basically what happens is you decide how long you want to store data on the Rubrik appliance. And then in this case, after 28 days, we're going to push it to, uh, to Amazon. We can also set up replication. Uh, so essentially, you say uh, the first 14 days are the most important ones. So that data needs to be replicated across uh, both sides. So once you have this SLA, you can now apply it to any source, essentially, uh, virtual and physical. 
So you could apply it to an individual VM, um, but for, let's say, management overhead purposes, it's probably easier to apply it at a higher level object. Could be vCenter, could be a site, could be a cluster, could be a virtual folder. So in this case, we're doing a, a virtual folder. So you select the object and then you assign uh, the newly made SLA to that. So in this case, the, the V Brown Bank one. And then the nice thing is that once the SLA is assigned, every time a new object uh, is added to the uh, virtual folder, uh, all of those VMs are auto-protected. So assuming that the SLA is uh, running, we start taking backups. And then basically the reason to come back to the interface is to do restores. Uh, so that works through our uh, predictive search. So you start typing the name of a virtual machine or a data source. Then we find that VM in this case for you. We show you some basic information. It's managed by this vCenter. Uh, it's using the gold SLA. We have 36 backups so far. And on the right side, you see the calendar view. So every uh, Azure colored bubble is at least one backup. You pick the point in time you want to restore from. This icon means that it's also replicated. So what you can do is you can browse inside of the data set. So in this case, it's a virtual machine. You can just drill down, you select the files or the folders you want to restore. So in this case, let's uh, restore the test folder. And you can override the original or restore to another location, and that's it. So now we're restoring this, uh, this file or folder. You can also search inside of the data set. So if you don't exactly know uh, where the files or folders are located, you simply type the name of a file, in this case, the host file. We then still show you all of the versions that are on the, uh, on the cluster. So you can essentially pick uh, the one you're looking for. And if you scroll uh, down further, you see a cloud icon appear, which means that the data is not actually on Rubrik anymore. It's stored in S3, but you can still restore it. So the only difference there is that it will take uh, a bit longer to get, that, uh, to get that data back. So besides files and folders, I can also restore the entire virtual machine in its uh, entirety. So the way it works is you select the ESXi host that we want to uh, mount this uh, uh, VM to. So what happens now is that we're becoming an NFS data store um, uh, within your vCenter. So you will see we're spinning up a new virtual machine here. And what you'll see is that uh, the name of that virtual machine uh, corresponds with the timestamp of that snapshot. So we're actually creating a new VM. Uh, so it's not replacing your production one. And then in a couple of seconds here, it will be live. So if you go back to rubric, and if you go to live mounts, uh, it should appear here. So we have a couple of VMs mounted, and there you see the one that we just uh, that we just selected. So that's now uh, remotely available, and your uh, end users can uh, connect back to that uh, to that service. We can also restore it um, uh, back uh, immediately, so replacing the production one. Uh, but essentially, the choice is up to is up to you. So what you see here is that we're presenting it as an uh, NFS3 data store to that particular host that you uh, choose to use. Um, it's also valid uh, for physical workloads. So for example, if you uh, go to Linux host, so we do Linux and Windows uh, as well. Uh, what you see here is that we use the same SLA-based uh, system. So once you define your global SLAs, they, they sort of valid for all, uh, all sources. Uh, in addition here, you can define uh, exactly which files you want to uh, backup for a physical workload. But then it works the same way. So you can browse inside of the file set. Uh, in this case, I want to pull out a specific file, so you simply restore it back to your uh, physical uh, Linux box uh, in this case. That's it. Again, you can also search in the physical file set. Uh, so if you're not sure where it's located, you simply search for it and we, uh, we pull it out. Same concept. All right. Then finally, um, we can also support uh, SQL Server uh, workloads, uh, both physical and virtual. Uh, so again, the idea is that uh, you can sort of start from the same base uh, and use the same type of SLA. So in this case, uh, uh, the gold SLA. And additionally, we can do a log-based backup for SQL as well. So that's an additional value you set. Looks the same way. Uh, we have the calendar view on the right. So if you want to restore from a certain point in time, you click on that specific date. And now we have this slider bar that allows you to specify up to the minute uh, what uh, data set you want to restore. So in this case, it's going to be a combination of uh, snapshots and log-based backups that we will then uh, uh, replay if you uh, restore. And the nice thing is I can restore and overwrite my database, but I can also export my database. And I can even export the database between SQL versions. So you can go from an old version and essentially do a migration to a newer 
uh, SQL version. But you can go from physical to virtual or virtual to physical as well. So just as easy as that. You can also live mount a SQL database. So if you want to instantly recover a full uh, SQL database, uh, you live mount it and then we present it to your uh, SQL server using SMB v3. And then you can pull out individual uh, tables, individual objects, uh, and restore them between your um, uh, production workloads uh, and your, uh, your restored database. So because we do uh, a lot of uh, automation, essentially, uh, we track compliance with the SLAs. So we define this SLA, but then, of course, you have to be sure that we're actually meeting those SLAs. So that's all tracked. We also track the storage growth. Uh, and that then uh, allows us to predict uh, the runtime you still have with this, uh, with this current setup. You can drill down in all of these reports. Uh, and essentially, this one will then also show you the storage growth uh, per object per day. So if you want to use that type of information for uh, things like internal uh, showback or uh, chargeback, uh, that's totally possible as well. Uh, all of these reports can be uh, mailed out as well. So you can schedule these. Uh, and the nice thing is it's uh, sent out as an HTML5 formatted email, so you can read it on your, uh, on your iPhone or your iPad. That's, that's totally possible as well. We can customize all of these reports. So if you want to pull out some specific information for your specific situation, that's, that's totally fine as well. So that's essentially what I wanted to, uh, to show you. So uh, thanks very much. Thank you.